Well, good day to you and welcome back. Well, maybe you're a typewriter collector now. Maybe you only have one typewriter, maybe a few or maybe a few dozen. And perhaps you've been focusing on the collecting part, learning to maintain them or getting them fixed. And you're excited about how that new hobby is coming. And maybe you have a few really nice machines that you like, like I like this Optima Super a lot. But the fundamental question I have for you today is, what are you going to write about? When you sit down to the typewriter, thread some paper in it, what are you going to write? And I have a few thoughts about that, a few suggestions for you. What to write with your typewriter. Stay tuned. Well, one of the first ways to really start enjoying using your typewriter is to write letters to people. I have letters that come in to me all the time. There's over a dozen of them right here, and I have binders full of the reply letters that I get back from people. Writing letters is so much fun. I get letters from all over the world, Australia, Europe, Canada, and so it's a lot of fun. I get most of my letter writing connections through TypePal's website. I'll leave a link down below. There's probably other letter writing groups, but typing letters to people is really a great way to start out with your typewriter, and it's very satisfying. And if you have nothing else to write about, invariably, a letter comes in the mail and you get to respond to it. And so I find a lot of satisfaction in letter writing because I get to talk to other people that I wouldn't otherwise know and they all each have their own emphasis on how they use typewriters, how they format their letters, the kind of paper they use, the kind of decorations like stamps or whatever or letterheads that they have printed. So it's a lot of fun typing letters to people. I advise you to try it. So when I started getting interested in typewriters in roughly the mid-aughts, uh, I soon, maybe around 2006 or 7 time period, I started a blog on Blogger platform, which I still maintain to this day. My initial blog articles were just digitally written and with photographs maybe. Eventually, I discovered the typosphere, and I discovered there was a whole bunch of bloggers that were photographing their typewritten pages and putting them on their blog. And so I've been doing that since maybe around 2007 time period, and I have a whole slew of three ring binders full of my blog articles. This is my binder of the latest stuff I've been doing. So I keep the raw typed sheets. I will photograph them usually just with my phone under good lights, crop it and make it nice and neat, and then upload it to my blog. Starting a blog, is easy to do. There's a lot of free blogging platforms and then you can notify the Typosphere webpage that you have a typewriter blog and they'll get you on the blog roll of all the typewriter bloggers. And then you can start blogging with your typewriter. You can write to an audience with a certain particular voice, a writer's voice of a certain particular interest or subject matter or genre that you like to talk about or just your private life or the kind of things you want to share around your typewriter hobby, whatever you want to do with it. Blogging is a great way to learn to write for a public audience, get feedback from them, and I found myself with a lot of satisfaction over the years blogging with a typewriter, and I recommend you try it. I like to think of blogging like having your own newspaper or your own magazine, like you're your own journalist, and you're publishing your own periodical out to the world via the internet and you're using typewriters, typewritten ink on paper. And it's a great way to get into this virtual journalism, like citizen journalism is the way I think of it, as a blogger. It's a very satisfying thing to do and it's really open-ended. There's so many things you can write about. You can cover local issues and you can document them on your blog and you really can become a citizen journalist. So related to your own blog, there's also a crowdsourced blog that's typewriter focused and it's called One Typed. 
page. And I've contributed to one type page, and I have a whole bunch of writings I've sub submitted. And it's basically the same as blogging on your own platform. You will scan your typewritten page, and you'll upload it to the one type page uh, website via their little uploader and it'll get published the next day or so. So that's another good way to share your thoughts typewritten on paper to a wider audience if you don't want to maintain your own blog web page yourself. So I've been retired now for about a year, but I remember years and years working shift work at a semiconductor factory and just yearning for the weekend to come up so I would have time to type. Just the physical action of typing, but also being able to just sit down and write whatever comes off the top of my head. And a lot of those writings weren't really suitable or weren't targeted for a public audience like a blog article, for instance. So a lot of times I would just type whatever came to my mind and I would call it my typewritten journal and I would put them in binders. And I have all kinds of binders, big stacks of binders full of these just private typewritten writings. And it could be about anything, but it is a kind of therapy, I think, just to be able to sit down and share your thoughts with no particular focus necessarily and no particular aim, just sitting down and seeing what happens between your fingers and the keys and what shows up as ink on paper. A private typewritten journal or diary is a great thing to maintain with your typewriters. One of the most valuable things that I've found to do with typewriters is use them to write personal stories about your life, your family life, maybe your work life or friends you've interacted with. But these kind of personal memoirs can be very powerful. And of course, you could type them or write them into a word processor, but there's something special about typing with a typewriter, ink impressed into paper. You have a physical piece of paper with the story written on it, and it becomes tangible. Once you bring it into the physical world as a tangible artifact, there's a power to that that isn't necessarily there when it's just a virtual document. You set that piece of paper down on your desk, there's a story written on it from your life, your family's life perhaps, and now it forces you to have to reckon with the fact that it now exists in the real world. It's now a physical artifact. There's a story there. What are you going to do with it? It kind of challenges you. What are you going to do with this? You've documented it. Are you going to keep writing? document more of these stories? Are you going to polish them and finish them and maybe give them to your family or relatives or friends? But it, whatever you do with it, the fact or the act of typing it in tangible form onto paper has a great power to it. So there's a thing that happens when I really get into typing or writing with a typewriter, and that is the idea of a flow state. Now, it doesn't happen with everybody. I was just in a workshop a few days ago with writers who were being introduced for the first time with typewriters, and about half the group got on really well with the idea of typewriters, and the other half decided they were too clunky for them. But if typewriters work for you mechanically, then they can help you arrive at what's called the flow state, which is a state of low distraction. So you're focused completely on the words and the sentences and the thoughts, and it's just you and the keyboard. And in that flow state, you can often write things that are surprising to yourself. Like you don't know, you didn't know you were going to write this. So this is like unexpected writings. And it could be personal feelings, maybe deep-seated things, but it also could be maybe you have thoughts rolling around in your head about things going on in the world around you. The flow state of a typewriter helps you to express that succinctly in like essay form in a way that helps you form those thoughts concisely. And that is something that's really important with typewriting. If you get into the flow state, just go with your thoughts and your feelings and the things you're thinking about and how it relates to the world around you and write like personal essays on things that are important to you and you'll be surprised at what can happen. 
Well, another thing you can do with a typewriter is you can do things like type recipes or other hobby-related things that require uh, documentation on paper. That's a fun thing to do. Using your typewriter for pragmatic things around the house. In fact, if you do have a lot of recipes, you might even want to consider keeping a small typewriter in the kitchen somewhere so that it's readily accessible. Maybe you can type grocery lists or lists of errands. Like, find a pragmatic thing to do with your typewriter for your day-to-day -day use. So zine making has been a thing since at least the 1960s. A zine is a handmade magazine, handcrafted, and you can make them a number of ways, including you can handwrite them, you can paste photos onto pieces of paper, and then you can scan them and print them out on your printer, or you can actually do it the old-fashioned way, go down to the copy center and Xerox your zines. But uh, making zines with a typewriter is really cool, and you can mix it with hand-drawn art, line art, and photographs as well. So zines are really cool, really popular these days, and you basically have your own little micro-publication that you get to talk about whatever subject matter you want to talk about. And there are entire zine festivals going on around the world now. They're very popular. So if you have a particular subject matter you want to focus on, you have a particular vision or a literary voice you want to share, Zine making is so cool. There's a lot of craft involved, and typewriters work really well for doing zines. Well, this is not an exhaustive list of everything you can do with a typewriter. These are just some of the ideas I have that might get you started. But some of you are out there are really doing some interesting things with typewriters already, and I'd like to hear about them. So please drop a note down below in the comments section if you have a cool thing you're doing with typewriters that we didn't really mention, because I think the rest of us would love to hear it. But as always, Writing with a typewriter is about creativity, and I encourage you to stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.